second. Let's see if we, where's your 40 at? It's 5,000 RPM. Alrighty guys, so we're about to take the GT out for a spin. Now this one, I love the way he has it specced out with the lighter wheels, the Corsa. I could hear it. That sounds really, really nice. Um, never driven one that had the performance package before. So it's new territory for me. And I'm excited to see what the fuss is all about. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Oh, that's nice, that digital dash. Okay. So right now, what motor are we in? Normal driving mode? Normal, yeah. Okay. Change it up right now. Cool. Let me just feel it out of normal okay. real quick. Yeah, definitely feel like I'm sitting lower. <laughs> yeah. Right off the back. Let me just lock my car. Like the more sport you ride. Mm-hmm. And these gauges are part of the uh, performance, performance pack, pack as That's well? That's another way you can tell it's a performance pack. Mm -hmm. What do the gauges tell you? Oil pressure? Oil pressure and the vacuum. Vacuum. I never understood what the vacuum was. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I should know, but something I don't know. Maybe it's just a cool factor. Because I feel like I've asked somebody else before, they told me the same thing. I'm waiting to hear like a proper <laughs> answer of what it could be. G4s, yeah, all that stuff. Okay. It. Typically, that's where I'm looking at mm -hmm. the, the cylinder head, how hot it is. 212 degrees right now Fahrenheit. So when I'm pushing it, goes up to 230, 240. Yeah, that's, hot. that's pretty hot. <laughs> Air fuel is oh 14%. Yeah, I like how all the information tells you. Mm, you have everything in front of you. <laughs> And that's the gear selection right there and everything yeah. mile per hour though. That's a very neat setup. It's kind of straightforward, just get everything you need right yeah. there. And then oh, what is change. all this right here? So this is where it came from the dealer. They added that for security reasons. Oh, okay. And then sync sure, three and then we put the wheel a little bit stiffer. So in sport mode, okay, yeah, it tightens That's why I leave it on. I hate it. I'm comfort or normal. It's still loose room. Mm-hmm. And then sound system wise, what do they give you guys in here? Shaker. Shaker sounds oh, okay. terrible. I don't like it. You don't like it? No. See, I have the hardened carton, but for me, oh. I, I think the the base is is a little too, too much, much with the subwoofers. <laughs> I gotta always turn it down. So I'm not. I don't like. I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. But other than that, it's all right. Honestly, they're gonna upgrade the 2019s and have a new sound system. And change them out. Yeah, I forgot what boy company it was, but it's shakers aren't so great. It I'm, feels a lot tighter in here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, uh, mine feels very, like, Open spacious. Up, yeah. yeah, yeah. This one feels a lot more, like, aggressive, even, like, from the, the curves of the the way this windshield kind of slopes down and the windows and everything. But surprisingly, yeah. still, it's still good, uh, good visibility. The visibility is pretty, pretty good, yeah. Um, for comparing to Camaro's, it's pretty... Oh, bro, Camaro, like, forget <laughs> it. I, I rented one to go to Vegas, and I hated it. I could not. So right now you have me in what? what normal. Mode? It's on normal. So normal. Okay. Let's see, this is where I was at. I was on track. So, okay. Let me honestly, let me just put on regular normal, and then mm. we'll put sport right here. Okay. And it should be a little snappier. Okay. You step one. That course sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, your ride is pretty stiff. Is it? Yeah, I feel stiff. Yeah, no, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it is. Mm. I feel. You're pretty yours. Yeah, yeah, course, yeah, yeah. It feels. Uh, See that to me is a very different feeling the way the 10 speed is. Oh, well, you're not even <laughs> yeah. in the next motor now. That's just regular sport. That's sport. So, it so does it get more aggressive than that? Oh yeah, it's got a track as well. Okay. That's awesome. So you were rolling what from a 
40. That was on yeah. its second gear. So right now I'm in eighth gear, and it has yeah. that much movement. Wow. It drops. So it's, it's skipping gears also, right? Yeah. So it doesn't go the, in, in a row. Because you're going so fast, so. Oh, so it just drops gears. Okay, let's see. So if I was to downshift the second, would it upshift by itself or do I have no, to upshift? No, you have to upshift. Even uh, no matter what? No matter what. Because you know what I was reading the comments? They were like, push it over, drop it, and then once you start moving, push it over back into drive, and then it'll shift by itself. For me, you could do that thing on when you put on regular drive, but when mm -hmm. everything's on sporting, mm -hmm. on sport, on track, it, it would just redline. Uh oh, I'm, lo I'm loving this exhaust. <laughs> it's, okay, I'm gonna do like a third gear pull. So what's the what's, what's second? Second? Yeah. Okay, so second. Let's see if we went to where's your 40 at? It's 5,000 RPM. Wow. That is a. <laughs> that gear change is so smooth. Wow, yeah. that's a very. Yeah, no, and your step, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's just smooth throughout. Okay, so how do I go back out of the paddle shifter? Just hold it? I tried that in a bit. I don't know. Did it you did, do something? No, no okay. Essentially, when you start braking, it starts going down by itself. And so it takes trick. you out of the um, auto, like the manual mode. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that, that very different sensation for real. Wow. See, the 10-speed in this feels so much better Wait. than the 10-speed I drove. I drove like a basic one when they first came out, and I did not like it. So I don't know, maybe because this one's broken in or Probably, with the yeah. exhaust and everything. The truth, it's, I, it does feel different when it's broken in. When yeah. I first got it, mm -hmm. huge difference. Because I was abusing it when I first got it. And what I noticed on the turn radius, yours is a lot better. Oh, on the turn radius? Yeah. <laughs> Mustangs have always had. They're very rev happy. They yeah, love to rev. It's almost like a motorcycle, dude. It just wants to keep going. Have you had any close encounters with this thing? Like where you felt like you kind of lost control, corrected it? Nothing? No. You, know, you don't need Because I know that's something a lot of people complain about. That, um, like, it's been good. It's been good for the most part. Yeah. yeah. For me, because of the weight, it's like very hard to like lose control. But you definitely can slide it very easily and like it's very controllable but i think because this is lighter if you were to floor on a turn oh. it, i think it would be very sketchy compared to let's say like the srt because of the yeah, light so that's I'm, when we're going to, when we're going high speeds on the turn oh my god yeah you got out of it <laughs> i don't want to bother because we're so close to the, to mm -hmm. the curve too so the thing everyone's probably wondering do you pick up a lot of girls with this car i don't have a girl already so oh so <laughs> he's taken he's trying, oh. trying to get himself in trouble <laughs> Good. Does it have the front sensors? No, it doesn't. No. It's just they need to start putting those on these yeah, cars. Same time, you don't want too much weight. But I don't think it would add too much. Just a little bit of sensor yeah. maybe connected to the front. Oh, that's really loud. 
Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it, it gets annoying. When you're trying to go on, uh, what is it? Uh, and then you have like the, yeah. the old school part. We're trying to go oh. parallel. Mm -hmm. Forget about it. I get annoyed. My girl gets mad. Okay. <laughs> Do you mind giving it a rev? Yeah. I will let them hear it. So tell me one more time, what is this exhaust called? Corsa Extreme. Corsa Extreme exhaust. Uh, it's three inch cap back. Is it all the way back? Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, double X5 too. Woo! All right. I'm gonna close my ears. <laughs> Let's hear it. Enough. Wow, that is loud. You want to hear it? Yeah, you step on it. Okay, sure. How high do you want me to go up? <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, bro, watch out. <laughs> that will get you in trouble. That is a very, very loud exhaust. Alrighty guys, as luck would have it, my GoPro ended up actually cutting off right there. So I decided to jump on here real quick, give you a little bit of um, my experience behind the wheel of the Mustang and kind of share a little bit of my opinion of how things went. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to say is driving the Performance Pack Mustang over the regular Mustang, you know, the base model was a very big difference. Um, you know, you definitely felt it in the driver's seat. Uh, the car just uh, felt like it was a lot um, uh, more responsive, uh, obviously maybe because of the gearing in the rear end. I'm not sure why, but it just felt like it was a lot more fun to drive. Um, could be for other reasons, like maybe the last car I drove wasn't fully broken in, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into some of the things that I absolutely loved about this specific Mustang. Um, definitely the exhaust, of course the extreme exhaust with that Coyote motor is, is a wonderful sight to be around. Um, it sounds great. When you get on it, uh, it definitely kind of screams and is very rev happy, which was really cool. Uh, the digital dash in the cockpit was amazing. That is a very nice dash, gave you a lot of information. It was very clear. Um, and I wish newer cars would have that. You know, maybe the char Challenger Chargers moving forward should have something like that. It would definitely be a big plus. So now let's get into the characteristic kind of of the Coyote motor. So obviously now that the power has been stepped up a little bit. Um, and I think the torque is up as well. Uh, the car feels uh, quicker. Uh, the you know the engine um, I think is a little more responsive than before, as it has that you know stock advantage uh, versus the previous Coyotes, which were a little down on power. So the car gets moving. It's a little different than the way the Challenger gets moving, um, due to the torque still being a little less than the Challenger, and primarily because uh, of the transmission. And that's something I want to touch on. The 10-speed uh, to me was not as great as the 8-speed in the Challenger for several reasons. Uh, one is that it felt it was a little laggy um, when stepping on it, when downshifting, the paddle shifters didn't feel as responsive. Um, and sometimes it felt like it was hunting for gears, looking for that proper gear and that sweet spot to give the power. And maybe that's because it has a lot of gears, maybe that's for tuning, it can be something that would be improved in the future. But for me, I feel like stock for stock, the Challenger uh, transmission is superior just because of the way that um, it, it kind of gives that power to you. It makes you feel like you're going fast and it gives you a very confident feeling that it knows what it's doing. It has it down. Um, there's no guessing of what gear it wants to be in. It just downshift and moves out and that is a very nice feeling of confidence behind the wheel um, so I definitely like that but uh, apart from that the, the Mustang drove really well it was a very tight cockpit uh, so it was very much sportier ride versus the Challenger which is very spacious uh, a very nice cruiser so if you are somebody let's say that is looking for a car that you want to daily and maybe kind of cruise around town get on it here and there um, and just overall kind of enjoy then I would say the Challenger is a great car or candidate for you if you're somebody that's looking for a car that's a great platform um, to um, build up and modify Mustang hands down uh, would have uh, my vote just because that car has a ton of aftermarket support there's a ton of modifications you can do to them and uh, 
they make power a lot easier. So I would say the Challenger is more of a ready-made car that has uh, all the bells and whistles. Um, it's already got most of the power extracted from that Hemi from the uh, uh, from the factory, versus a Mustang has a lot to give, and uh, it would probably be a better car to build up and boost and modify to make big power. So those are my two cents. Very different cars, still muscle cars, and I'm honestly just glad that in this day and age we have these amazing American muscle cars or maybe a pony car let's say for the Mustang that provides so much value um, they are a lot of fun and uh, you know they've come a long way and that's something that we should all appreciate as car guys I want to end this like whole like you know Mustang suck, Challenger suck, Camaro suck, trash talk that goes on but I know I can't do it but it is what it is I try to keep it positive on this channel I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you leave a big like if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next one so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later peace